Yo, question right quick right here, homie to homie. Homie to homie. When you're in the train on them herbs. Like, what's, the, herbs. what's the type of thing you be listening to? Is it music? Is it podcast? Audio books? Screaming babies? Mm, definitely not screaming babies. Um I found this uh emo playlist on Spotify. And I've been I've been writing that shit hard. Because it just brings back memories, you know? Oh, but like uh, when you talk about emo, emo from like the 2000s, my chemical yeah. romance. Yeah, this one, uh, actually I have it here. Okay, it was a, it it's, was a few bands. It's called, uh, the, the, the playlist is called Still Into You. Still Into You for anybody out there who's, I'm thinking, guessing, who's thinking and killing themselves. <laughs> I'm guessing this is like a Spotify curated uh list i don't know it's um all time low fall okay. boy dashboard confessional okay this uh, was like the type of music you would listen to if you were coming out as gay in 2003. <laughs> and story I think, of the year i think it's great that you listen to this and uh the years no, I, 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 i'm just fucking around the other day i actually i got drunk Nah, I got a little tipsy. I got home. I still wanted to keep drinking. I had a few beers in the fridge. I like to put them in the fr in the freezer, get them a little colder even, and then pass, start popping them. And then I, mm -hmm. boom, I turn on my TV and I just put loud ass music like the Goo Goo Dolls, uh, My Chemical Romance, um, you know, Avenged Sevenfold. The Goo Goo Dolls. Shit. Yep. Yep. Wow. I went deep. I went deep. Wow. Corn. <laughs> Say Osen, taking back Sunday. I'm like, what's happening with me? Say Osen. I was cutting my my arms and shit. I was like, what? <laughs> I think, uh, isn't it? Evanescence. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Uh, yellow card. Me. Apparently, yellow card. yellow card. It's like a it's like a religious band. I don't oh, know word. if it was then, word. but apparently it's now. Word, that could word, be. and <laughs> also and also Seosin. Seosin was religious. Yeah, apparently. I mean, I don't. I, do you know when you know when you hear the songs and you only know a little bit and you don't really go deep into the into the words? There's this guy in Spain. Doesn't matter who it is, but like they, he <laughs> took out a song that was like really big, right? And mm -hmm. the song sort of it's like he's talking about somebody, like oh, I, I want to be with you and all this shit. And then I later heard, oh, he's religious. That song is about God. And then I started listening to the lyrics. I'm like, I see how some of the lyrics could be about God, but then some others are like, I want to be with you and, you know, <laughs> and, you know, come in your face, <laughs> that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so how is that compatible with the Almighty yeah. Lord? Mm. So it's weird. It is weird. Sometimes it doesn't it's match. <laughs> it doesn't translate. Yeah, fuck, I'm trying to remember this band who was remember. also, they, they had a big song in the 2000s, but I think it was like one or two big songs and then they disappeared. Gym Class Heroes. No. That was no, a good they, one though. Linkin Park. <laughs> Definitely not two songs. Linkin Park, uh, no. Puddle of Mud. Ah, fuck. No? Okay. No, it's okay. Anyways. Uh, Move on, people that are listening we, are like, we don't care. <laughs> We all sang the song, and then later on, the words meant something about being with God and all this shit. That... System of a Down. Ram. Of a research. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> System of a Down. <laughs> By the way, if, you ha if you're tipsy, System of a Down. Crazy. Amazing. Yeah? Wow. And the of my head. I, no, when I when you I was well. younger, I was scared. I was scared of uh, Serge Tarkarian. Yeah, they're from like Armenia. Yeah, they gave me weird vibes, but very good songs. Amazing songs. There's actually an Anthony Bourdain's episode where he goes to eat in Armenia, and he does it with Serge. Serge is his name. Serge. That's pretty cool. Serge Tankian. Tankian. Yeah, the Armenians. They've been through a lot. <laughs> we don't want to get into that. No, they have. I mean, they had like the Armenian genocide, which was horrible. And 
Uh, I thought uh, people wasn't only like think the Kardashians. Of Kardashians. Yeah, mm. the Armenian blood. Armenian blood is pretty fire. How fire? Like pretty fire. Like it's one of the best bloods. Venezuelan blood. Mm. Okay, mm. average. It's not bad. Average at best. It's not bad, but it's sometimes a little bit above average. Venezuelan pure indigenous blood. Very bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's what? better when you mix it. Uh, like, like we, we, we're like a combination of like European indigenous mountain people from Venezuela, donkey fuckers. I mean, I'm not trying to like prejudge anybody but that's the type of practices they had you know and i'm not like i'm not i'm not anybody to come here and try to like judge you for the type of shit you did in your past you know like back then you didn't have all the all other means you know do you feel like you can still judge the spaniards after 450 years well i live in spain now because i'm coming back to get my revenge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even want to give my real answer because then it won't be funny anymore. It's uh, your revenge. Revenge. It's your revenge. It, I want to have revenge. <laughs> no, I really don't. I really don't care. And I think it's stupid for people to think about like Spanish colonizadors or the English or whatever. Like that's how the world was. It was Game of Thrones. You got to places and you colonize them. That's how the world worked. Let's be thankful yes. the world doesn't work like that anymore, or it kind of still does, but not in the same uh, aesthetics. You know, you have a more diplomatic approach to it, but it's still a, a war between countries trying to get dominance of shit and resources. And it's always been like that. So I don't know. I just, I, I, we have to accept whatever it is and move forward with it and make sure that the world we live in now is good. But like going to Sp Spanish people and saying, like, oh, you guys fucked us over. It's the revenge would be equal to the revenge. Just putting pineapple on the pizza for the Italian. For the Italian. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm just going culinary. Because that's, okay. what that's how your brain funny. functions, right? Yeah. Maybe putting a, a, a platano, plantains on. All right, let's on, go. On sushi, for example. <laughs> that That is. One of the worst things. I is that like, is that super riffraff? It is. Because it here is. in Spain, for example, there's this Venezuelan sushi place, which by the way, Venezuelan style sushi is not bad. It's very adventurous. It has a lot of a little fusions and uh, daring takes to food. But I think sometimes they go a little overboard. And I know my friend Chef Marie is being very delicate when it comes to the culinary arts and, and the, food, um, the food world. One of the sushis that I do not like, Venezuelan style, is the one where they have sweet plantain on it. And I mm. think that's where you go a little bit riff-raffy. Do you agree there? What's the rule there? You know, what happens? Uh, you burn the kitchen, though. You can't okay. do that shit. Okay. <laughs> do you think, like, because sometimes it's hard to know where fusion is allowed and where, it, you know, it violates. Because in this case, we agree in this one. But when it comes to, like, pineapple and pizza, we both like it. So it would be hypocrites for us to say, in one, you can't have this fusion, in the other one, you can. When I'm pretty sure there's a, an Italian in Napoli saying, you're going to put the, the pineapple on the pizza, I killed you. Hmm. So, is that making you rethink now? Your judgmental no. attitude in life? No, definitely not. Fuck everybody. It's only what I like that okay. counts. Well, at least you accepted your narcissistic <laughs> nature and you prefer that way. What yeah, I, I fucking want. I think at the end it's whatever you want, but we always tend to judge based on what we do not like. However, I, think, I tend to be very open. I don't like the plantain on the sushi, but I respect it and I respect people to like it. Because, for example, burger-wise, I like burgers that have very weird... Combinations. I've had a burger with like guacamole, chips, and like pico de gallo. And then they call it Mexican. And it was called like the fourth of you know the fourth of July or some shit. <laughs> Cinco, Cinco de Mayo or some shit. 
<laughs> and like oh and cheddar cheese melted of course mm -hmm. now is that is that tacky is that a little on the nose is that borderline raises mm -hmm. maybe but that shit was fire i mean the ingredients were good so how do you how do you look at it though Like ingredients were good, so it was a good burger, or everything came together and it elevated the burger. All right, let, let, let me speak in your terms. The ingredients were good, and the mix of those ingredients was really nice too. So to me, it was amazing. I've seen that gimmick be done in a place where it's not good, and I'm like, okay, you're just trying to mix shit in here and try to call it, you know, oh, here, the Mexicano burger. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Mexicano. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, oh, you, uh, hi, can I get the the ribs and the Tijuana melt? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't. Can I get the Guadalajara double decker? <laughs> you know, that's the type of shit. You know that they're they're on. So I guess what you, I'm saying what? is that. Before before you continue, those are amazing names, by the way. <laughs> okay, you see, <laughs> Great we, we need to open names. up a, Mex, a Tex Mex <laughs> restaurant that's very on the nose. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Mexicanitos. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to have like very good Tex Mex, where people are like, "Oh, this is like very cultural appropriation uh, and very tacky." Very Taco Bellish, but it's actually very good. Mm. <laughs> it's like they use great ingredients. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we go to the farmer's market every day, you know, and we go to pick up the, the, the fruits and things. But yeah, make America great again, <laughs> you know. The farmers, not directly to the farmers, that's the thing. People, no, because when you go through middlemen, you mm -hmm. know, th there's a bunch of liberals that go to like, uh, what's the place that they go to? The, the Whole Foods, right? Uh, Trader Joe's. No, no, or Trader Joe's too. Mm -hmm. Where they go and buy all this organic shit, right? That has gone through a bunch of middlemen that are white, the distributors, right? <laughs> Making money, these white motherfuckers. And guess what? Get guess who's getting the grunt of the work and the little and then the less paid? Fucking Juan. Mm. Okay. So when I go to the farmers directly. <laughs> And I, I'm sorry if I'm laughing. It's like when I tell these stories, I get really passionate about it. When I go to Juan and we buy the ingredients directly there, right? Guess what? He's getting more money for it. We're cutting the middleman out, the white devil. And you know what most of these people tell me? Juan, Roberto, Luisito. You know what they tell me? You know what they tell me? We want to make America great again. That's what they believe. I've seen it. They say, you know why? Because they're like, we want a, a, a country that's strong. That what, protects its people, its border. What happens, uh, what happens if they were a Mexican and they were from Nigeria? No, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I, yeah, haven't, I, don't know I, I haven't done that one yet. I haven't perfected that one yet. I but I, but I put it, I, you know, I put it in the request book. But you know, you got Venezuelans coming through there too. How does, how does that sound? Oye, papi, mira, como que yo llego aquí para llegar para Miami. Yo tengo que llegar para Orlando. No, por allá, pum, pendiente. No vale. Ahí está la migra, marico. Pendiente. Were you ever scared of la migra? No, bro. Was there ever a situation where you're like, this is it? One time. <laughs> <laughs> no, what type of question is that? That's a retarded question. Well, I mean, undocumented people like you. <laughs> That's edited out. I mean, it won't really be edited out, but for people listening, imagine that didn't just happen and that question didn't happen. It's like a mental edit. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I wanted to get to the topic of today. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, so you get the you get the fresh fucking uh, the ingredients, ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. So where was I going with this? Oh, the I, I was the burger, the, the burger, right? Mm 
Uh huh. So I pick it up. I, I'm no the burrito place, the the, the Tex Mex. <laughs> I go and get the fucking ingredients. I get the cheddar cheese. I make the Tex Mex, the burrito, the thing. You know, you call. You have very tacky names for all the things. Great names. You know. The Cancun burrito. But like very bad for people are like, oh, that's fucking a little insulting. But it's like, it's, no, it's a troll. But it's fire. Fuego. It's super good. People can't deny it. And I'll only hire white people. <laughs> but not because, no, no, but let me, let me explain. Please, no, please. Because people are going to get the, the wrong, the wrong thing. I only hire white people because then the Latinos and Mexicans that go eat there, they're going to be like, okay. what? Is this all? <laughs> and, and you, it's going to be one of the, <laughs> what are you, are you said? I'm just imagining the situation. Right. Where... So it's going to, it's going to be these kitchens that are all like glass, right? So you can see the people inside. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, they're obviously, oh, look, they're all white. And, you know, so it's all like Stephanie's, uh, Adams, Kevin's, you know, mm -hmm. Jerry, Michael. Michael's. And like the first time they go, right, you go, you're going to be like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to eat there. Like that, that's the mm -hmm. guy that's doing the Mexican food, right? But you go because, you know, they, they through Instagram, they're doing like, oh, this two for one. If you come try it out, you know, so you're like, okay, you go with your, you know, the girl you're fucking that week. And you go and you get the two for one burrito, right? Tex Mex. You know, it's called the Guadalajara burrito, whatever, you know. It's, and when as soon as you come in, there's like one one of those white dudes <laughs> he's dressed, he's dressed like a like a mariachi, and he's like dancing. Da, 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 like, you know. And and people are like, wow, this is very tacky. This is like very on the nose. This is stupid, right? You go in there, you see the guys in the back making the food, you're like, these white guys are going to make this. I mean, white guys, white girls. So you're already predisposed because everyone's racist, even a little bit. Even minorities are racist. They're looking at the white people like they're not going to cook that food fire. Or well, guess what? We've trained these fucking people for months in a warehouse where we perfected mm. a formula for them to do this Tex-Mex food. We get the ingredients directly from Juan in the mornings. Right, so we have the whole thing done. Now, what happens when these Latinos and Mexicans that are eating this food are predisposed by how the food is going to be bad because the people that are making it are white? Then they eat it. They're like, what the fuck is this? This is the best shit I've ever had. They feel that they cannot even accept it and say the truth because they're going to be betraying their own people. But it isn't. This is part of their culture. It's what they've embraced. So at the end of the day, even though people might think, oh, you only hire white people. That's racist. No, I only hire white people so that I can prove a point. And now the town, in, in every way, is less racist and has grown. Now, when the lesson has been learned, then you fire them and you only hire minorities. And which town would this work at? Any town. In, this this has been proven in any town. This can no, work. I mean, if you do it in, in Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, I mean, Los Angeles, well, uh, San Francisco will be the perfect town. Because that's that's what people are gonna be like. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Have you heard of this place where the where the main guy at the grill's name is fucking Michael? And you know Michael, he's, he he takes this shit. He's like, oh, I get it. They prejudge me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I live in the, I live in the suburbs of fucking San Jose. I got mm -hmm. a skateboard, blind. If you know about brands and shit, I got nice trucks. And I got a nice little Raptor. You know, 2011, you know, I got it on loan. It's okay. And I learned how to fucking grill this chicken, grill this steak to make fire burritos at, you know, Guadalajara Inn, whatever this place is called. And they prejudge me and they say this, mo you know what they even said? I don't like saying this. Oh, this fucking white boy can cook. Oh, oh he feels like, whoa. Mm. Mm, offended. Like, oh, why can't I cook? <laughs> huh? What's what? What is it? Am I only allowed to to be an oppressor? Is that the only thing I'm good at? No, I want to be a good griller in this fucking place, and I'm giving my soul and my passion to it. And guess what? He got really good at it. And now people in the town are like, "God damn it, I love that burrito." And Michael, you kill it. And that's how Mexicans and white people and Latinos came together in that town. 
Mm. You feel me? This is like a thing, a movement we can get going. Okay, like give me another example. For example, <laughs> again, only our white people, Asian food. <laughs> <laughs> okay you okay. get me so that's the <laughs> that's kind of like th that's the type of thing we're looking for like like changes mm. and cut and we start again okay that is edit out edit it out <laughs> <laughs> the Guadalajara sunrays no but real quick I wanted to get to the topic <laughs> of today <laughs> What's the deal with airplanes? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but um, no, but um, no, but um, I, I did have but, a few. Um, I did have a few things I wanted to speak about. One of them being, and I, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but I, it, I came across it again recently. You know these unaware people that, for example, sit in a couch, but they curl one of their feet in. So they seat above it, and that part of the shoe sole is like literally touching the couch. Are those people in the spectrum? And I just want to know because then, then I know like, oh, it's not their fault. Can you just Google that? People that put their sole in the sofa, are they in the spectrum? I think this, the answer will come out Reddit or something. <laughs> What's the answer? What well, they are because because mm. it's insane. Like, and it's, it's all, you have somebody also in the metro. They put the feet on the sit in front. That's fucked. Or or other people that are sitting in the couch and then there's a table in front where you can put drinks, and they put their feet on the table. You do that? Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. You are a psychopath. It depends on the table, though. If it's a glass table, no. If it's a, a wooden table. You know what's crazy? You're very meticulous <laughs> when it comes to hygiene and food. Like when Chef Maurice came to my house in Madrid, he was so annoying about everything. Everything had, it, it had to be clean. And I'm like, okay, I get it. He's a you know, Michelin star chef. He's been all over the world, many continents. I mean, you know, I get it. I'm just a normal Joe. So he, he's very high standards when it comes to hygiene, cleanness, prepping everything having and then you're telling me you tell me that you wait, put wait, your wait, feet wait, wait. on the fucking table where then you can put some chips no, or some no, shit no, that no. you're eating and it has your fucking bacteria from outside if if there's food already in the table i won't do that shit but if if we're just but in any there, case it just feels like so wrong it, it, to do that but it also depends where you do if i do it at home it's my house i do whatever the fuck i want but I'm not going to go to your house and do that shit in your house. Okay. I appreciate at least having the awareness of not doing it somewhere else. But I would even appreciate it more if you wouldn't even want to do it at your house. Because then what do you do? Do you clean it after? Eventually, you're going to have some food or drinks there. If maybe I do it in the morning. I'm watching, a, I don't know, a movie. And I know that you're coming in later. Maybe I'll wipe it. Maybe. Maybe I'll wipe I it. I like the honesty. If I remember, I'll wipe it. Now, when you when you're telling me you're putting the foot on the table, is uh -huh. is it is it with like your socks, or is it the fucking shoe? No, barefoot. A barefoot. Okay. Wears I mean, <laughs> I mean the wor worst no, of the no, worst no, would be no the shoes. shoes. No, no shoes. shoes. Okay. Would you ever yeah, do no it with shoes? shoes? No shoes. Though. Would you ever do it with shoes? Like you see, it maybe a... now, maybe now that we're talking about it, probably not. But have I done it before previously? Probably okay. I have. Okay. So you 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 know never say never <laughs> type thing. Okay. Never no, say you, never. I, I think it's crazy. Okay, how about the one where but you curl in the feet? I know feet? you're coming to have dinner. No, I can't do that. I'm a big guy anyway. I mean so you I you and us we don't even understand that. Legs. Like we do that we can break our legs. <laughs> uh, it's like a pretzel. But, but you seen but that? Have the, you seen that? When I go in the metro Yeah, I Yes, and that's that one I don't like. You're putting your fucking shoes on my sofa. Do you think part Fuck of you. the goal should be I don't have to use the public transport anymore and then I don't have to see the savages? But that's the thing. I do it when I'm... 
Oh, you do metro. it in the metro. Wait, wait, wait. I just sit, then I'll just, I'll just put my leg out, and maybe put it not on the chair, but like, how can I explain this? I'll put my leg like in the corner of the chair, but not the shoe. So what's holding my leg is is uh, it's just a corner in the back of of my batata. Okay. But I'm okay. not putting the shoe on the chair where you put your ass. Okay, I get you. Okay, that's better. At least I want to think that. That's better. I mean, it's, it still doesn't project a good image for uh, Hispanics and South Americans across the world. But technically, it, it, it isn't nearly as bad as putting the shoe on the on the actual seat, which is like a pet peeve that I have and I hate it. The youngins is where you see it the most. That's why I want to start a campaign where new parents have to pass a test. Before they have a kid, and it's like a commitment okay. to you teaching this little fucker manners and things. Mm. And if you But, can't pass it, and you get like evaluated every year, and these motherfuckers okay. out of line, we send you and the kid to jail. <laughs> Some shit like that. I mean, I don't know. I haven't figured out like the logistics of it and the <laughs> and the little details, but something along those lines, you know. Now, how do you how? Well, you say you were you were gonna test it every every year, so that's how you would regulate it. Yeah, I mean, you you get like a bunch, you know, every year you get, let's say, in like a little playing ground, 50 of them kids. And then and it's the like, a, yeah, it's like a two hour activity where you have little games and things and you find out who's a piece of okay. shit, you know. <laughs> and the piece of shit, you, you go to the parents and you're like, hey, what the fuck is up with Jimmy? Why is he just a fucking mm. cunt? And, you How know, old you, is he? You go from How there. old is Jimmy? Jimmy is... Seven years old. Seven years old. Okay, okay. He hits, is a cunt. Hits girls. Fucking cunt. Lies and manipulates a teacher. And he's a little snitch. Snitch oh, a doodle. And not a snitch like, like, oh, you're snitching on some, like, okay, I should tell the teacher this because something bad is happening. And I, uh, No, snitching on some, like, on some bitch shit. Mm -hmm. now, you get me? Like, like something that doesn't need to be snitched on. Like it's not hurting anybody. You just want to tell the teacher so that you can fuck little Roberto because Roberto has an accent. He just moved from Venezuela. You know that guy that's yeah. always like looking for the weaker link? Mm -hmm. You see little Roberto. He just came in. He's still like working out his paper status situation. He doesn't even know his mom, you know, has to work in prostitution <laughs> so that she can pay for the studio apartment they're staying in. You know? <laughs> that, 17 other no, people people say why do you have to give these details i think it really puts the context of what's happening and it's a lot easier to understand you know the the situation with roberto mm. <laughs> so anyways <laughs> you, you put you, your feet in the table I, i i don't agree with it but if it's barefoot okay it's a little better I just a little better like how i don't think it's a little better now that i think about it it's fucking disgusting both ways no Maybe it isn't the because the one that could no because if the you're only barefoot, one that can work it's the socks yeah but check me out if you if you're barefoot you're getting all the dirt well first of all i wouldn't i don't know how to be barefoot in my house i just think that's disgusting because everything is just has dust so i go in crocs That's the, that's my the way I do it. I, I'm already dad mode. I haven't had a kid yet, but I already feel there. You know, I take pills. I, you know, I have to watch my weight type shit. Like I'm already in dad mode, so I wear Crocs. Now, in your case, you go barefoot in your house. Okay, that's your problem, right? You have the dirt and all the bacteria in your feet, and then you put it on the table. That's bad. But mm -hmm. a shoe has all the bacteria from the outside as well. And you might think that if you have some socks, oh, then it's no problem. What well, do you think? The socks doesn't hit the floor? The same shit. The only one that could be acceptable in some cases is you have Crocs, you have socks. And then you sit down in the couch and you take your shoe with your sock out of the Crocs and then you put it in the table. Okay, there's no bacteria there. It's just, you know, your do smelly you, food. Do you ever lay on your couch? I do. Okay, where do you put your feet? Do you I just put, put it up to the side? 
I put him in in, in the armrest of the couch. But you like your feet are touching the armrest or they're just No no they're they're touching it. But when I do that I'm like now I, I I'm I'm with socks in my couch. And I don't use socks in the floor. So it's all clean. Yeah. I um when I was younger I used to walk barefoot at home. And then put your feet everywhere. And then put my feet everywhere. And yeah. then one day I just woke up and I'm like, this shit is disgusting. Okay, I'm happy that so you now, changed. So, so now I have now I have pantus, pantuflitas, pantuflitas. Okay, uh, what what would uh, you call them? Uh, they do have a name, bro. These little huggies that you used to go around your house. I can show you. I have them on right now. Yeah, sure, sure. Put it in the camera. Let the people know. Okay, that's pretty cute. Uh, they're nasty but yeah my problem with those is that they collect a lot of dust yeah and and they drag it everywhere and i haven't ha found any of them that don't do that so i've changed to crocs it's been many years now maybe a sponsorship might be in the you know in the works and i'm a fucking nice one i'm married to them i like them mm. do you have the holes or completely close well right now i have one that's completely close and it's super diplomatic I love it. I feel like I'm. I have the what you would the Gucci version of the mm. Crocs, the one that has a little suede, brown little wow. leather with the little straps. I think those are the shoes that I'm talking about, and the ones that you're talking about. I think the the they're called clogs. They're open, close in the uh, in the in the front, open in the back. And then you can just walk right into it and ro walk right out of it. But I do have a rule with my shoes. Like this, what I just showed you, I can only wear it inside the house. If I have to throw out the, the garbage outside, I'll take out my fucking shoes. I'll put my tennis shoes. And then I'll go out. The, the thing is that at home, I have a space for my shoes. Like as soon as we get home from work, from whatever the fuck we're doing, as soon as we walk in, we take our shoes out. You have and outside put... shoes and you have inside shoes. Inside, exactly. A little tip for and out now there. We're, now we're teaching our son. I love how that. to. I love that because at the end of the day, you get these nice little traditions, these little things you do to make your life easier, cleaner, nicer. And then you pass it mm -hmm. on to your offspring. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the human condition, guys. I think and... I was, uh, when I was little, I was taught to be barefooted because we always had carpet in our rooms. And, you know, you think that carpet is cleaner, but that shit is disgusting. After you grow up, you find out carpet is one of the worst things to have. That's where, like, little bacteria, animals, you can never really clean it. And if you ever get yeah. it with some wine, then you're fucked. So... But then you have something like the ShamWow. I don't know, some fucking miracle carpet cleaner have you seen those commercials no probably yeah, if you spill wine on the carpet and you put this shit on top of it, it sucks it up it, yeah. it may or may not be true i don't know i don't think it's true but in any case yeah carpet is bad shoes inside the house i think we've talked about this before my rule is i have my inside shoes so i don't i don't have to be shoeless but when mm -hmm. people come you know Come through with your shoes. That's it. And when you leave, I'll clean the house. How deep did you clean your house after we left? Very, very much. Very, okay. No, just normal. You know, you clean the house and that's it. And then you don't have to tell anybody to take off their shoes. So if you mm -hmm. have a house with carpets and you tell people to take off their shoes when you come in, that's weird. That's for like cults that fuck each other. <laughs> You know, when we first moved to San Francisco, we went to a, a Thanksgiving dinner and we were invited and we, we, we went in the house and one of our friends told us, oh, uh, so-and-so's house is an Asian house, but he's white. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what the fucking Asian house is, but cool, congrats. And then as soon as we walk into the house, 
we walk with our shoes and they're like no take your shoes off i took my shoes off i had socks i was okay now my girlfriend didn't have socks and she had to walk barefooted in a, a stranger's home and you don't know when was the last time they fucking cleaned the, the floor it was like the worst experience for mm. me to see her like that and i don't know how she fucking spent two or three hours at barefoot okay so you think sometimes these clashes and cultures can be a little too much if you're not ready okay. yeah i mean i wasn't ready we weren't ready for that and it was a fucking surprise but i had socks and i was would, okay would you say if you're in san francisco you know bring an extra pair of socks if you go out Maybe, maybe, yeah, put an extra pair of socks in your book bag or in your, I don't right. know, your pocket. Make your dick look bigger. Right. That way, if any and Asian then, friends come along. But that's the funny thing. He wasn't Asian. He was white. He was from, I don't know, Delray Beach. What up? But the white guy is the one hosting you guys? The guy hosting us is, he's white. He's His house from, is white. I mean, he's white. The house owner. He's white. <laughs> so, why the owner, so why the fuck does but... he have his Asian rules? <laughs> he got, what, he said he's an oh. Asian house. Like he, hi, I'm a white guy. I have this house, but we identify as Asian. <laughs> well, later on, I found out that Asian house means you take your fucking shoes off when you walk into the house, and you they're supposed, or from my understanding, a lot of the Asian houses they have little slippers for guests. This one didn't have it. They just asked you to take your fucking shoes off. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm at a point where if I get to a place and they tell me that I'm like, okay, I'll just leave. Thank you. Enjoy. Now, I, I thinking back on it, maybe we should have left. But then, aren't you like an asshole for leaving? You are. You are, but they're an asshole too. Like, don't tell me, they oh, it's a nation house. Before. Yeah, just tell me, hey, you need to fucking come with no Slippers. shoes type shit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's an Asian house. I'm supposed to assume that fucking means something. I don't know if I, an Asian house could be you go there, you get massage and a fucking blowjob. I don't know. I never been. Right, I have never been. I just my, moved here. Oh no, an Asian house means. Mm, all right, tell me. Because my otherwise... my group of Asian friends in my life, I could count them maybe with no fingers because I never had an Asian friend. Right, right. He prefers not to. No, no, I prefer to. No, oh, you prefer. <laughs> so you, it you was just haven't a, had the opportunity yet. I hadn't had the opportunity to go in a nation house, mm. so I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. If you go to Bangkok, a nation house probably means a whole different thing. You know it's probably mean? a good thing. A nation house in Bangkok could be. You're sitting in a platform, they flip you over and some lady boys fucking you. So all I'm saying is... I mean, if you pay for that, it's okay. Right? Yeah, but sometimes you don't know what you pay for. So all I'm saying is... <laughs> please explain what the fuck you're really saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you know. Oh, you're going to an Asian house. No, we're going to a place where you need to bring socks. Okay? In this house, we're going to be with a bunch of freaks. <laughs> we're going to take off our shoes. We're going to bond. We're gonna fuck like that cold that went to Guyana and killed himself with Kool Aid in 1998. All right. Well, that's the Broski Doodles podcast uh, for you. San Francisco in the house. Is that a UF that you're wearing? UF? It is. UF. University of Florida Gators. Um, much love from here to Los Angeles, <laughs> the home of the homeless. All right. Take care, guys. Love you.